All right. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here again with Dylan Lang, and this time we are going to be talking Dune Prophecy, the official trailer, which just came out last week. So I will start by shooting it over to Dylan and say, opening thoughts? Uh, opening thoughts? It looks, I mean, it's a TV show. I'm working on a TV show budget instead of a movie. It looks a little lower budget than the, the movies necessarily do. Uh, but I did like, there was a lot of really interesting like transitions in the trailer. I don't know how many of those will stay in the show, but I, if it's covering the beginnings of the sisterhood, like it, it seems to be, uh, I think it'd be cool if we get something a bit more surrealistic with its editing, uh, because the way that the sisterhood works is, is through, you know, getting really high and remembering the past, <laughs> um, but I, I'm I'm interested in it more than I'm necessarily excited for it. Uh, the trailer itself looks pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, the the one cast member that I, I really recognized and am excited about is uh, Mark Strong as the Emperor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's a pretty cool actor. He hasn't necessarily gotten any huge roles. I feel like. Um, but, you know, he was like the, the villain in Shazam, um, and he's been in the Kingsman movies. Um, he's but, been in lots of things. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been in a lot of things, so it's not like he's an unknown, but I just feel like he's never gotten, like, a leading role necessarily. Uh, and I feel like he's not necessarily going to get it with this either, but I'm, I'm just yeah. excited to see him whenever he shows up. <laughs> Yeah, I think we get this, like, we want a sister on the throne part, and then you see, you know, other people sitting on the throne that, that aren't him, that maybe he's only in the very beginning, and then will he yeah. be assassinated, will he die, or whatever, and then the rest of this TV series would be about, like, who gets to succeed him, maybe? Maybe. We don't know. But, yeah, I, it looks interesting, and obviously, I guess Denny Villeneuve was originally involved in doing some of it, um, but they do seem to, like, picked up a lot of his style of set design and stuff and yeah, costume it, design. It seems to be brutalist the way that uh, Denis Villeneuve kind of characterized it. Because at first I wasn't sure, because again, so uh, there's been kind of a long uh, production history with this. Uh, I, I want to say uh, it started almost immediately when... It, it was okay. It was uh, it was just before Dune came out. It was in 2019 when they announced that they were doing this uh, part one of of Dune. Uh, it was in 2019 that announced that uh, a show called uh, Dune Sisterhood would be getting made, and Denis Villeneuve was set as a producer, and he was supposed to direct. I think the first episode. Mm -hmm. um, then they there was something that ended up happening. They went through all types of different showrunners and, and script writers until uh, they got onto, I think the, the most recent ones. Uh, I'm not sure who it is, but they, uh, they changed it to Dune prophecy. And I think Denis Villeneuve is only attached as a producer now. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if, if even that. Uh, so I was kind of curious if it was still going to be canon to the movies uh, because it's being done by Warner Brothers, uh, mm -hmm. HBO, the same way, or the same studio that did the the, the new movies. Uh, and then, like, the, the logo in the trailer seems to look a lot like the one in the movies and the logo, the final logo that, like, they have on, like, the Wikipedia entry it looks a little different, but it's still going for the same kind of simple style. So I, mm -hmm. I guess it's just a variation to distinguish that it's set in the past, maybe. Um, yeah, the but, way they play with time, is, I think it's going to be interesting. So we had this character from 10,000 years before Doom. Yeah. And um, she's saying 10,000 years before Paul Atreides was born, like she's in on the future, right? So, yeah. Um, the distant future, right? So... It's like so ten thousand years before the events of the book Dune, that they already can like see the, all the future and all the past. I mean, that seems like and that's Paul not the beginning also, of the sisterhood, right? Yeah, Paul also was uh, 
like an unforeseen consequence as well. So I'm curious if that is one of the characters from like the current events of the show, or if there's going to be maybe like a, a narrator to set the scene. Mm. Uh, Cause if so, that's, that's a little bit of an oversight. I feel like <laughs> um, there's a couple inconsistencies from the source material it's pulling from anyway uh, I, that I've, I've heard of, I've heard the Brian Herbert and Kevin J Anderson books uh, pretty frequently kind of break away from established uh, concepts. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. So this is specifically based off of the uh, Dune uh, sisterhood of Dune book which is part of the schools of dune trilogy i'm wondering if they might have changed the name from dune prophecy to sisterhood of dune because they might be doing the whole trilogy eventually mm -hmm. maybe with the success of the movie they decided to retool it at from like a mini series to like an ongoing series that'd be kind of interesting mm -hmm. plus it's like I, I i think setting something this far back is kind of a, a good idea because it's so far back, it's 10,000 years that, like, you can really keep making seasons for this All right. <laughs> and not really have to worry about uh, overstepping into the current timeline of the movies or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then even that's supposed to be like 13,000 years in the future for us. So yeah. you've got 23,000 years of history you can bounce around in without really coming up against anything that you know we've seen so far in the movies yeah uh so, so it'll, yeah it'll be interesting i think the first book is set immediately not immediate it's like 80 years i think give or take but it, it, it's pretty immediately following up on the events of the uh butlerian jihad prequel trilogy they wrote and i'm curious if they'll touch on the the jihad at all they've been kind of avoiding using the word jihad in the mm -hmm. most recent mm -hmm. adaptation uh so maybe they'll change the name but i know that some of the like machine characters of the this schools of dune trilogy i think one of them pops up in in this and i also think that uh part of even though like the main jihad had already happened, part of the trilogy is about the, the consequences of that and still trying to uh, push people away from using technology. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really curious to see that aspect because I feel like uh, the part one of Dune was really good with the world building. Uh, part two kind of sp speed run through mm -hmm. a lot of it. And I'd be curious to see this universe's interpretations of like the spazing guild and uh the mentats the and guild also interests me because this is we as Irland tells us right that what we've been seeing in dune is 10,191 or something like that right yeah and so if this is 10,000 years ago then it's like you know the year 100 or 200 post the founding of the navigators guild so since that's where they're they're numbering things from before guild and after guild but the guild members can't hold space without spice right so yeah there still has to be spice around um that's always been a kind of one of those head scratchers for me because like the fremen want to turn dune into his green paradise it's like and then the worms die right yeah and they don't have any more spice and so there's no more space travel can't we do this without killing all the worms off um, so that, so then I'm thinking, well, 10,000 years even before that, if it was a green paradise, where are the worms? Where are they getting the spice? How are the na navigators getting to hold space? So I'm hoping they delve into that a little bit because I've always been confused about the, the whole makeup of who's using spice when and did they yeah. use a different drug before spice? Because, you know, 10,000 years, did they have the worms? Did they know about worms? You know, I, I don't know. I know that the I've 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 read up to Heretics of Dune in the in Frank Herbert's series. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that his sequel novels really do kind of deal with the consequences of trying right. to change it to Green Paradise. But you're you're right. Uh, like, at what point does Arrakis become a desert planet with the sandworms and and everything? Uh, that would be interesting to see. Because if they're indigenous, um, there must have been some pretty substantial desert when we think, or they wouldn't have evolved there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
Uh, and yeah, just again with the Spazing Guild, there's there's such a bizarre element of the books whenever they really start kind of revealing them. Mm -hmm. Like like in Messiah, they have one of the main navigators, and he's like in this fishbowl, and he's like a weird webbed creature. So see, I, I'd be curious to see if they put that in this TV show, because I feel like that's kind of a major element, like a major reveal of Messiah that they might want to save for the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how early on into every, like, like how how deep into development each house is going to be, or uh, guild is going to be for yeah. this series. Because Edric, I think that's his name, is a third stage guild navigator, right? And so yeah. when we see in that op one of those opening scenes in the first Dune movie where we have the black guy come out and say, I am the Herald of the Change, you know, and he's supposed yeah. to be from the spacing guild, right? He's clearly not a third stage guild navigator. Maybe he's just an apprentice. I don't know. Or just a spokesman. Looks, he just look. He still looks pretty human, right? So you have to think he's not very far down that path if that it is indeed his path. Um, but where does that all start? You know, does does it is it ten thousand? Because okay, so ten thousand one hundred and you know ninety whatever years before Paul, there's a space guild established. Well, it must have been around to be established. So there must have been space travel before then, yeah. right? But it just wasn't by the guild. So what was doing the space travel and, um, you know, did they still look human even if they were like third stage guild navigators now came yeah. later when, you know, I, I don't understand that. I haven't, I have not read any of the, the Brian Herbert and Kevin Janerson books, except I started the one that comes after chapter house student and I haven't finished it. So I am tempted to read the sisterhood books now to see if I can get any of this like, backstory because one of the things about dude it's like lord of the rings i mean there's just so much backstory there's right? so much <laughs> that you know i find myself sometimes when like, we're watching something on television with this lord of the rings i like i try to resist it but sometimes i can't and i like have to turn mute the tv and like tell my husband like the whole backstory of something yeah because they're just touching on it but then they're moving on and you probably don't really need to know it to appreciate you know what's going on in the scene but i'm like but this happened and this happened and this happened all yeah. thousands of years ago you know and um i get excited about it right so there's just so much i have a feeling that you know i might want to read these books just to feel a little more grounded and have some idea of who's doing what and who's who you know yeah and i also think that that's going to be something that makes this series even more politics heavy than the movies and that might be a turnoff for some but i think that'll be fascinating again like just seeing these uh like fledgling uh like clans just starting their their uh plans within plans mm -hmm. uh that'll be that'll be fascinating um i i am curious because it keeps getting listed as the uh, as an adaptation of Sisterhood of Dune. I am curious how loyal of an adaptation it will be, because mm -hmm. I noticed looking through IMDb, I was just kind of like double checking on, uh, I think the Dune wiki that exists, uh, some of the events that happen in, in this book, and then some of the names that were popping up. And I was just seeing who they got to play who. And like the Emperor name is completely different. The only name that is recognizable is uh, uh, Valia Harkonnen, I think, is is the one. It's either that one or Tula. There, there's two Harkonnens in this series, which is interesting because that means that the name Harkonnen has uh, kind of stayed and been passed down for 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. Same with, uh, I think, Atreides is in the books. I don't see anyone listed as an Atreides for this show. Um which I think that's also kind of curious because I want to say the Harkonnen uh, like house started off as like part of the Atreides clan and then got kind of kicked out. So mm -hmm. uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm curious about that. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know how loyal of an adaptation it's going to end up being, and that could be for better or for worse. Uh, again, I'm not sure the quality of these specific, uh, novels. I, I'm. They're the ones that I'm the most curious about. 
I don't really care much about the the ones that they wrote that are like set immediately before Dune, mm -hmm. where it's like here's Baby Paul running around and a young Duke Leto. I, I love those characters, so I'm somewhat curious, but it's it doesn't interest me as much as the ones that are set so far back. Mm -hmm. Uh Kind of, kind of like you were saying, where it's like, yeah. well, these are these major events that like shaped the world that you end up reading in the main series. Right. Uh, and so I would probably like them. I, I mean, I'm one of the few people maybe who love the Silmarillion, right? People are like, oh, it's unreadable. It's, uh, but I was always fascinated with it because it was like, here's the foundational stories of this world. And I love this world. And so, you know, it kind of spoke to me, I guess. It's and, also sort of you know, written like nonfiction, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, it's kind of like a biblical text almost you know where there's, <laughs> you're kind because of, he's using slightly you know antiquated language and stuff but um so for dune for me i maybe again maybe one of the very few people if the only person who kind of likes dune one better than dune two maybe only because i really like all the world building that's going on and the introduction of the characters um and that's what i get stuck on um dylan's mother and i are in the same writers group and i'll tell you dylan that the first three times i put a novel through the group <laughs> the first comment they all had was the first 100 pages of this novel are boring. <laughs> okay. My fourth novel, that's what it's Sky Knight. Then I decided I wasn't going to be boring and we were going to do a human sacrifice in chapter one. But, <laughs> but, but I was so hung up on, I just love the world building part that I was just doing what I love to do. And I was like, Oh, this is how things started. And here's, you know, all these new beginnings of things. And everyone's like, boring. We don't want to read it. And I'm like, Oh, but I want to read it. You know? So for me, when that happens in Lord of the Rings or Dude, I'm like, yes, cool. It's a world building, and you know. So yeah, I I think my mom has tried two different occasions to read Dune and has given up within about the first hundred pages. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if there was a lot of world building going on. If if she thought it was uh, a, a bit too boring for her, uh, I personally adored the slower pace of the first like hundred or so pages of of dune i because i thought that even though you could just say that like within the first hundred pages all that really happens is a family moves from their home to a new home there's still so much there that's like kind of uh important to the character development and growth even if it's just introductions to them it's fascinating to see them like at that stage mm -hmm. and then moving on like it like uh with paul specifically i really liked how throughout those 100 pages they are really emphasizing how he's a child he doesn't really have much of a personality of his own his personality is that he is the duke's son and and they keep kind of emphasizing that aspect until they rip it away from him essentially mm -hmm. by i think about 200 pages in so it's a little bit after that 100 first 100 pages um and so i i i dig that i i really like um kind of slower pace things especially when it when it comes to the character development side uh but i also i i adore the world building of dune too it's just such an interesting world so yeah so hopefully we'll get that in this show for me i'd be excited it may bore the rest of the viewers if they spend too much time on it um, because I was curious about, there's one little flashing scene in that trailer where we seem to see a bunch of maybe half-naked people dancing around a bonfire. And yeah. and I'm kind of like, so is that like the really, really distant past? Like, are they seeing like their Neanderthal ancestors now? Or, you know, or is just a, the beginnings of the Bene Gesture, they want to go out there and get high and dance around a bonfire? I don't know. Yeah, that could be I like the we'll first. I guess we'll find out. You know? Yeah, it could be the first spice orgy that, that, that was something that was missing from the movies. Uh but like with the the Fremen, they would have what they called spice orgies, uh, where they would all take a whole bunch of spice and party. Uh, so that that it could be something like that. Um, but it could also be the first time they're remembering the distant past. Past because a big part of the Bene Gesserit is uh, how other they have memory. yeah mm -hmm. the other memory. So that'll be cool. I'm 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 again I'm interested in it. I'm trying to keep my expectations a little uh low because of just the production history that I, I i was following with it where again it was like constant uh rotating door of writers and showrunners and just kind of vague about whether or not it was even still in production for a while mm -hmm. so 
that all is a little concerning on the production end. But again, if it delivers on fleshing out some of the concepts that I just feel like haven't been touched too much on in the movies, I'll, I'll be pretty happy with it. And also, as long as it's yeah. short, because I'm not great at watching TV. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if it's like 14 episodes, uh, I might not watch the whole thing. But if it's like a good six to eight, I'll, I'll probably be able to keep with it and uh, really enjoy it. Maybe we can cover it. Yeah, we can. Um, I'm kind of curious, too, about the emperor, since he seems to absent the throne somewhere pretty early in the trailer. So possibly yeah. in the show, too. Um, I think he's supposed to be a porno like Shaddam the Fourth, and so if this, then I find it interesting that okay, this dynasty has been on the throne for at least ten thousand years, which makes me think that Shaddam is just sort of like not much of an emperor because he's kind of like taken down real easy. Right? Yeah, he can't. He just can't let the rest of the Lansrad know that he helped the Harkonnens kill the Atreides. That's enough. Yeah, for him to like lose a throne of ten thousand years, that seems like a that surely emperors have done worse than that, and people found out about it at some point. They're still on the throne, you know, but it's like, oh, they did that one little nasty thing, and now Lansrad's going to be like, oh, we're mad at you now. No more Coronos on the Lion Throne. Yeah, or it could just be that there was that. It was just that. They were just that decrepit by that point, right? Yeah, or it was just that, like, thin of a balance uh, for 10,000 years of, of walking on eggshells mm -hmm. uh, and using the guidance of the Bene Gesserit. Um, yeah, by the rules of Canley. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah uh, I, I do find it interesting that uh, it, it's a Carino because just, just because that also makes the weight of Paul ascending the throne that much heavier that this has been a 10,000 year dynasty ripped from their hands. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, they're sort of not happy about it by children of Duke, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think All it's right. the fall. There's not a release date for it yet. No, they keep doing this sort of thing to us, right? You know, we're going to have more seasons sometime, right? <laughs> so, because I've still been waiting for like a release to drop date on like the new Rings of Power. And um, yeah, still don't know anything about that, I don't think, but that's the downside um, with prestige television is that now yeah. that they're like doing movie level budgets for every episode and stuff, it's like it takes forever for any season to come out. So, so God forbid you try to adapt a story with like children characters because by the time you get to <laughs> two, yeah. they're all five years oh, yeah. older. Right. Yeah. So, um, so we're both look, looking forward to this. I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. There's not a lot of TV shows that come on where I'm like, ooh, I mean, I know a lot of people hate bring us a power i'm it's not the best show ever made but i do really like it um it's just a fantasy series i'm enjoying it greatly and so i'm certainly looking forward to season two on that and um i'm looking forward to this dune thing so you know they're the kind of things that i i want to see so i am excited yeah i i'm i'm not much of a tv watcher uh i occasionally will so there's i'm not much of a tv watcher but i'm really interested in certain franchises so this is one of the franchises where it's like okay i'll make time for this show uh same with the the chucky tv series that i make time for that uh i made time for the resident evil tv series they made on netflix though i thought mm -hmm. that was really bad i kind of hate watch that more than anything <laughs> um for like completion's sake something along those lines sometimes sometimes it is on that level where it's like oh well it's a franchise i love and i've experienced everything else i need to watch the tv show like mm -hmm. i'm trying to find a way to watch the old planet of the apes tv show because mm -hmm. i've watched all of the movies and i'm i'm a big fan of the movies uh i don't know if you are but the the one the, the tv show from the 70s uh there's like a couple episodes uploaded onto YouTube, but like mm. not all of them. I think they're missing like three or four. So I'm trying to find a way to watch those. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so this is a show that I'll more than likely make time for. Um, I haven't watched Rings of Power. I'm kind of curious about it, but I also heard that they they gave like a their their plan for the five seasons basically. And I was like, well, it doesn't sound like anything I'm really interested in happens until season five. Because <laughs> uh, they, I think they said that by the time we get to season five for that, 
it's going to be like the the war for the ring uh Mm -hmm. that happened uh during the intro of the fellowship of the ring Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's what i'm more interested in but i guess it's important to flesh out all of those characters uh so well i do have some episodes uh we i've covered the first season with a friend of mine so if you want to look at my channel we do we have got episodes on my uh on my youtube channel on what we thought of rings of power season one so um one of the things i didn't like about it but i overall I, i'm really not that upset with it people seem to be really mad that it's not exactly the similar yeah. and it's like you know what i i i, ha- I have to excuse that it's not exactly the similar since they only had legal rights to do certain things and to use certain characters yeah um so though that i just have to like let go right it's not gonna be the similar <laughs> because they can't legally um yeah but then what did they do? What, why did they change certain things? It's interesting to kind of think, why did they do that? Is that because they can't touch this other character or whatever? So, but with Duda, I assume they're not going to have that problem because Frank Herbert and, maybe be gone, but Brian Herbert and Kevin Anderson are still around. And I think they're both technically producers on this. So, yeah. you, know, um, you know, we'll have to see what, what happens. But, um, I mean, it looks very interesting. The one thing I'm I'm curious about, I guess, in a way, is they seem to have like stuck with a lot of the costuming kind of design from the movies, especially with women yeah. having all these beads in their faces, which I think <laughs> find really weird. None of the men ever wear these costumes with all these beads hanging in front of their faces. <laughs> um, but it's like, so that that style lasted for 10,000 years, apparently, and I, I don't even understand why we have it, you know? Why yeah. do they have to semi-hide their faces, but not really? I think that partially has to do with the kind of... Uh, islamic uh like like a semi-hijab Im- or something. yeah it has to do with like the islamic imagery and and uh culture that the dune books do pull from uh and i think that that that's just the tv shows trying to incorporate it in some or the the movies and the tv show trying to incorporate it to some extent but i do agree that it does seem like not a lot has changed in 10,000 years. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like the move or the, the books are a little guilty of that. Cause the books end up jumping by like 5,000 years uh, at a certain point, And it doesn't feel like a whole lot has changed. It might be a commentary on, you know, complacency that things don't need to develop uh, under the rule of an emperor. Mm-hmm. I know that that's, kind of what frank herbert was really getting at was that stagnation uh, yeah Yeah. stagnation from rulers are is a bad thing so i can i can see an excuse but at the same time ten thousand years is a long time (laughs) i don't think people really understand how long of a time that is come up with some design in the costumes already yeah all right well, okay, I enjoyed having this little chat with you, and I hope that you guys who are watching are also looking forward to it, and that uh, when it comes out, Dylan and I, I'm sure we'll talk about it again, and I hope you will leave comments. And on this one, certainly like and subscribe, leave us some comments, and if you're excited to see it or not, or you're just going to like throw in the towel and say, I'm not looking at this TV show, but um, <laughs> hopefully you will, and we'll hear what you like about it and what you didn't like about it when it does come out. So thank you, Dylan. And thank you we'll for having you, me on. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.